Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where we discuss all things about Skullgirls Mobile. So this is the third video of the series and this whole time we're covering dark elemental variants and which of those are the top 5 variants you should evolve first. Now I'm going to sound like a broken record, but again, choosing which variants to evolve to diamond is very important for players in the early to mid game because getting those essences and fodders takes a very long time. Like my previous videos, the main factors that I considered when making this list is late game viability and comparison with other variants of the same character. This means that if I included Decrypted in this video, that means she's an amazing Dark variant and also an amazing Eliza variant to evolve. And again, this is only an example and Decrypted is definitely not in the list. So the Dark element is quite interesting because there isn't really any unifying theme across the variants. The Dark Elemental Catalyst, Dark Nut for example, gives stacks of armor and a chance to bleed, but armor or bleed isn't really something that Dark Variants are known for. I suppose the best way to unify Dark Variants is that most of these Variants have very unique mechanics that not other Variants or Elements could have, and these unique mechanics are often very powerful and makes Dark Variants stand out a bit more than the other Elements. Anyway, let's get straight onto the list now. Starting at number 5, we have Xenomorph. Upon first glance, Xenomorph has a crazy skill. By simply blocking and transmuting, Xenomorph can inflict a 30 second doom which will automatically kill the opponent. That is very powerful and definitely abusable. However, the rise of catalysts such as Final Stand for light fighters and variants such as Splitting Image with her immunity and Plot Twisted with her revival ability has made this strategy less effective and you end up wasting a lot of time which is invaluable in Rift Battles. I do believe that this strategy that is unique to your Xenomorph is still totally worth it and can definitely be a very practical solution for some newer players that may not have the answer against most defensive nodes. Xenomorph is at number 5 because I think Doublicious is a better first diamond for double, but the ability to kill the opponent from full HP is still something worth investing that you won't be able to get from any other variant in the game. At number 4 we have Perfect Dark. Perfect Dark is one of the easiest ways you can get in Curse, which is a super powerful debuff as it prevents the opponent from gaining any sort of buff. As a Silver Misfortune, Perfect Dark also has a very high attack stat comparable to the Gold Tier Misfortunes, so she can still definitely deal very good damage against some of the best defensive fighters in the game. Now her second signature ability is a bit more tricky as it requires Headless, but the ability to insta-kill the opponent is very very powerful. The combination of both her abilities basically means that Perfect Dark is a great fighter to use for newer players to deal with buff heavy variants, but in the hands of a pro Headless player, her usefulness doubles up significantly. The reason why she's at number 4 is because I do believe Claw and Order offer something unique that no other variants can provide and sh therefore should be prioritized. Make no mistake, an easy access to Curse with a high attack stat is still very very powerful and I will definitely recommend Perfect Dark for all the newer players out there. Coming up at number 3 is Primed an absolute beast of an offensive fighter. Primed is easily the best parasol you should evolve to diamond, with access to enrage and a high attack stat in combination with parasol's kit, which includes crit damage bonus from her marquee ability, immunity taunt, and on-demand precision. She is a huge offensive juggernaut that can tear through most defensive teams easily. Choosing the top 3 for this list was actually quite difficult, and in the end, it boils down to one thing which Prime currently lacks, which is buff control. As a parasol, Prime's only way of for buff control is Canopy Bounce, which is not super reliable. So in late game when you're facing against Frost Armor nodes, Light nodes with final stands, or variants like Vaporwave Fixin with access to the Thorns and Miasma, Prime starts to fall off a bit in favor of other variants with access to those buff controls. Regardless, Prime's damage is still absolutely insane and against nodes that do not rely on defensive buffs, she can easily delete the opponent super duper fast. At 
And at number 2 we have Bio Exorcist, an insane squiggly with a very unique signature ability that no other variants have. Aside from being able to revive multiple times, Bio Exorcist has a Drain ability which is super powerful because it eliminates defensive buffs and stats in the equation in the fight. Bio Exorcist is one of the few variants in the game that you can bring as a gold to take down a diamond tier fighter. She could easily delete opponents that are much stronger than her as long as you blo block properly and can keep your opponent in your combo loop. And this is Squiggly which has insane combo potential so you could easily corner the opponent and just keep draining their health by looping them in your long chain of combos. The opponent has literally very few ways to escape from this. And I did mention buff control as a factor of why Bio Exorcist sits at number 2, and while her signature ability does not have any sort of buff control, Squiggly has access to these through two special moves, Dragon Bite and Silver Cord, while also having access to Curse which prevents any buffs in her kit, such as the special move Dragon Punch. If you ever pull Bio Exorcist early on, you should be very very happy with yourself. Finally coming in number 1 we have Bloodbath. Bloodbath is one of my favorite variants in the game. Easy access to bleeds and Eliza's ability to chain combo loops through subsequent uses of her blockbuster means that she can kill pretty much most variants in the game as long as they don't resist bleed. If you think about it, she kinda has a similar role to Bio Exorcist, both can take down way stronger opponents through indirect damage, which in this case through bleed, and both has the ability to heal and remove debuffs as well. Remember, Eliza has Chaos Banish, which is hands down the best special move to clear buffs. Another nice synergy with Chaos Banish is Heal Block, which stops the likes of ICU Valentines from healing constantly through the bleeds that Bloodbath provides. For me, the reason why Bloodbath edges over Bio Exorcist is speed, as she can kill opponents much faster through multiple stacks of bleed and heal faster through multiple stacks of regen. I suppose it's a matter of debate and Bio Exorcist could easily take this number one spot here, but I've had experience with both and I personally enjoy playing Bloodbath so much more. And that is my top 5 variants that I will evolve first to Diamond. As more variants are released, this list could potentially change but as of this 4.6 update, these are what I think are the best non-diamond dark variants that we currently have in this game. The next section is, yep, you guessed it, the special mentions which are variants that I have considered but decided not to for various reasons. The first one up is Criminal Mind. Criminal Mind is the latest Cerebella that was released and she has identical stats as Harlequin. Her signature abilities are slightly more skewed towards defense, but she can still pack some serious punch on the offense. Be careful when facing her, or you'll regret it. The only reason why Criminal Mind isn't in the list is because of the fierce competition in Cerebella variants. There's Brain Freeze, Toad Warrior, and Harley Quinn which are all very very good choices. I personally would evolve Harley Quinn and Toad Warrior first before evolving Criminal Mind for the raw offensive pressure that those variants can provide. But Criminal Mind is still one of the better dark variants to evolve and still a very good investment to make. The other variant I considered was Moonstruck, and this may come as a surprise but there's a couple of reasons why I did consider her. I personally think that she's the best any variant in the game because of one simple reason, fast star power meter. Being able to get your star power super fast is amazing for Annie and opens up so much combo potential and damage. She also has access to meter control through Wither which is really really nice, and her second signature ability is also very unique for a non-Valentine variant. If you didn't know, there is a way to do a combo loop with Moonstruck allowing you to inflict massive chains of combos and while this could potentially be possible with other variants, Moonstruck's ability to fill star meter fast makes this so much easier to do with her. I'll put a link to that in the description down below. Now the reason why she's not in the list is because I think that the utility that the top 5 variants have is more useful and beneficial in the long run for rifts and late game viability. 
But if you love playing Annie, then I would not hesitate one bit to evolve her as soon as possible. Okay, so that is the end of this top 5 dark variants that you should evolve into Diamond first. Let me know your thoughts about this list and whether you agree or disagree in the comments down below. Thank you all so much for watching this video and be sure to give a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Just to let you know, I'm also going to start streaming at least once a week in Twitch, so be sure to follow me in the description down below and hope you all have a great day and I will see you in the next video.